Mr. Laszlo Bartha is an ethologist, who has been breeding and working with large livestock guardian shepherd dogs with decades. In the past 15 years he has lived in Sakiafold, which is situated in eastern Transylvania. This small region is very special in our days, as on this small region, there are more wolves and bears are living wildly and freely than in whole Western and Central Europe combined. In this region it is completely prohibited to hunt, or kill these predators, only livestock guardian shepherd dogs can keep them away from the sheep flocks that are gazed in big numbers in the mountainous pastures where they are gazing. These dogs work like as if they were living in the age when shepherd dogs were invented and used in big numbers. Mr. Bartha, not so long ago we made a video about Sharplaninax, where the breeder told us that this breed, the Sharplaninac, or the Sharp, still retains its ancient characteristics because they came down from the mountains not a long time ago. In practice, it is perhaps not yet as involved in this modern line breeding as other breeds, who are also called LGDs, or livestock guardians. What do you experience in connection with Sharplaninax, have you had any experiences with them? I have the best experience with Sharplaninax, but that doesn't mean they are just good, there are bad ones, and so I would argue with this previous statement from the breeder that they came down the mountains not long ago. Some of them came down the mountain not long ago, but others came down a long time ago and headed from the mountain in the very wrong direction. This is a much more complex, much more complicated situation and problem with Sharplaninax. This is thus a good marketing text. The point is that Sharplaninac is also the tip of my heart because the first thing that I talked about earlier was that we should get rid of line breed breeding. I stepped out of this frame, the framework of line breed breeding, I say I stepped out of its limits. And in that, I got very strong confirmation from one of my dogs, my second best dog, called Kurek, who is a Sharplaninac Central Asian mix, and I think he brought his classic from the Sharplaninac side. There he struck back on the Sharplaninac line, both constructively and in his habitus and abilities at all. Something classic Sharplaninac might have been one of his ancestors, and he struck back at it. So I had a very good opinion of Sharplaninacs from the start, and I also had very good impressions and feelings. Although this dog was only half that, it was quite in my heart. It was a very, very good dog. Back then, I looked for a thing or two about Sharplaninacs. I later contacted a certain company of Sharplaninac breeders. Because Sharplaninac breeding, I don't even know where to start, can be approached from several sides. This is now a completely contingent from which I can approach, even from where one could approach. I will tell you as an interesting thing that we have several videos about Sharplaninacs, and Bosnians, Serbs, Croats, Macedonians and I don't even know what their nations argue with each other's in the comment section actually all the time about who who the Sharps are and where they originate from. What's good, everyone wants it for themselves. The point is that there is an arbitrary point in Sharplaninac breeding as well, it may not be the best place to start, but now I will. There is a duality, there are two camps in Sharplaninac breeding. When I got involved in this, I automatically developed a relationship with one side, as they were buyers for my thoughts, we were on a wavelength with them, and they were the representatives of working lines and breeders. There is the show line here as well, as I mentioned before, and there is the working line, now I will name them very generally for now. By the time I got in touch with them, I was already a massively performance-centric person, I had already lived in Transylvania, and I was only interested in the real shepherd dogs with real working abilities. Of course, they were also performance-centric, the word found right away. But there is also a massive appearance breeding all around the world, even in the Balkans. What these show breeders produce are huge teddy bear-like dogs, I know they would not work effectively in a real livestock guardian dog environment. They look nice in kennels and shows, maybe even bark, but there's a situation where it would seem like they don't work. As I said before, if there is no selection pressure in one direction, the dogs will start to disintegrate in that direction. The external thing is so specialized that there is no pressure in this direction. I wouldn't deal with them, I mean the show lines much. I would rather deal with the other side, with the real working lines. They are lucky enough in my opinion, because they can start from one of the best LGD dog standard. The Sharplaninac standard as it is written, I feel it, and I have said this elsewhere as well, I feel that those who put it together had knowledge of real shepherd dogs. For all the other standards, I'll tell you honestly, and it may seem exaggerated, and it seems very arrogant, 
but I don't feel like these have been put together by people who understood the shepherd dogs, even on a minimal level. They were not even those, would have just spent a few days with an understanding I buy a flock and observe these dogs. They were mainly townspeople who had even dogs, but the shepherd dog itself is not known for them in depth. The Sharplaninac standard is what I feel the best among all LGD breed standards. So whoever put it together knew something. He knew something, he might have been out there, he might have observed working shepherd dogs, he felt it, or from his ancestors, from where, I don't know. The point is, he knew something. To shorten, the point is, the Sharplaninac standard is the best. Performance breeders are therefore fortunate that they can start from the best basis compared to the others. I'm not saying it's perfect either, the Sharplaninac standard isn't perfect either, but it's the best of all, and that's a big advantage. I think that's a big advantage. The other part is that they are the closest, right at the Balkans, and are much closer to us, European dog experts than Central Asia, or the Caucasian mountain area, or the Afghans, to mention the full spectrum. So they have a relatively good standard, better than the others, closer to the place of origin, and that's a big advantage, so I thought for a long time that these dogs are the best, but they're on a very good path of becoming not so good. The show lines have already started on the slope from my point of view, the situation is analogous to that of Central Asian Shepherds, or the Caucasian Shepherds. The same dead end, the same slope, the same trap. Here again, the problem with the show lines is, as I have already mentioned in connection with the Central Asian Shepherds, that the selection for fighting appears in performance or working lines. Muslims are interesting for me because on the one hand, for Muslims, the dog is an unclean animal, it can't be touched, in principle, they should not deal with dogs. But they still do. I don't understand that. I have no idea why and as I don't know Muslims well, it would be ridiculous from my part to comment it. If someone wanted to say something about the Sakellis from afar, I would laugh at it too. Probably a Muslim would laugh at me too if I started analyzing Muslims. I don't even try. But I see that the dog fighting is going very hard in the Muslim countryside. Now very large parts of the Balkans have become Muslim, or have remained Muslim. I don't know that either. Because the Turkish occupation on the Balkans lasted much longer than for example in Hungary. They may have converted to the Muslim faith during the prolonged occupation, perhaps certain minorities converted to the Muslim faith, remained in their faith, and now that this migration is taking place, they are receiving Muslim supplies from the Middle East. They also have money, they buy up the areas, the villages in the Balkans region. The Muslim community is growing in the Balkans. That is a fact, this is not my interpretation. And I see this growing Muslim community, it's fighting the dogs massively, even though they shouldn't deal with dogs, because of the Muslim religion, which doesn't really encourage dealing with dogs, except for greyhounds. So there's a confusion here that it measured, and that, I didn't touch it. I can only see that there is a contradiction, but there is still the fact that dogs are being fought with each others. Now the problem is that performance has become too pronged. There were working sharps, working alongside the flocks, and there were fighting sharps. In Central Asia there were usually livestock guardian dogs, or shepherd dogs, which worked around flocks, and the shepherds usually tried them out in a fighting situation as well. However, the Balkans are falling apart politically and culturally, in all respects. Something has happened that pastoralism is falling apart there, as it is partly in Central Asia. It is not profitable, it doesn't pay enough to keep sheep flocks anymore. Since the Balkans are not part of the European Union, at least in the regions where I have been, sheep farming is pretty much falling apart or has already fallen apart. There are still sharps near the flocks as livestock guardians, but long ago there was obviously a lot more, it's a declining process. What is happening now? In the old days, when tens of thousands of sheep were kept, or more, and there were many dogs by the flocks, they were tested against each others in their villages in the winters, there was a healthy oriental type of shepherd dog breeding. Now, as the shepherding was ruined, as it was pushed back, these dogs were finding their place more and more in their villages, and only they could keep their rank there and the owners kept them because they were fighting well. So the fighting intensified, the shepherd dog demand, the shepherd dog use became weaker. Now somewhere, I don't know where we are on this seesaw, that there's hardly a little shepherd dogs left anymore, 
and there are a lot of fighting sharps, or even all of them, I don't know exactly. I don't even need to know exactly. I can feel the trend of going through everything in the direction of fighting. And those who are performance-centric, and with whom I think I can build the best relationship, bring in working line dogs from the Balkans, who turn out to have a fighter origin and past, not a shepherd dog past. Like the breeder you quoted earlier, these imported dogs came in from the mountains not long ago. They too are actually brought in from the place of origin, just not by the flock. Because they don't have good relationships with the flock keepers or owners, or it's more expensive or more cumbersome, I can't judge that. I was with them once in Macedonia and I didn't really understand the situation because we had an interpreter. We wanted to buy some dogs and we couldn't buy these dogs right there, and I didn't understand why not. It was a very, very complicated, confusing, complex situation. It wasn't the fault of the breeders with whom I went, the mediation there was completely incomprehensible to me because we found three or four dogs that were considered valuable, even in a place where they were clean, there was a flock next to them, either in the paddock or in the pasture. And we wanted to buy from them, but we couldn't. And we had to go back for the dogs separately, but then we couldn't go back, because the relationship still didn't form. So I didn't understand the situation, especially since I live in Transylvania, and they tried to organize the trip from another EU country. The point is that it didn't come together that way, not because of their fault, but because of the organization there. What I can see from all this is, that it's not so easy to buy and bring a dog from the mountains to anywhere, something doesn't work for some reason. Either these Muslim communities are too closed, or everyone wants to earn more on the deal, or more people want to earn on the deal and involve in the transaction. I can't judge, but I see it as very problematic. Therefore, they bought and brought in dogs from where it is easier to do it. With whom makes it easier to import from? I think they have good relationships with those who fight these dogs with each others in the villages and towns, not the ones who guard the flocks with them. And they bring in dogs that fight very well, but that's not the goal. I noticed many times that the dogs that are from them have a damn good build, on the one hand. On the other hand, it turned out that it was a fighting dog, and all of its puppies were so aggressive with other dogs that we could not use them for the shepherd or livestock guardian work that we intended. I don't get this from the air, I live this on my own skin, on my own curse, that they DOD not work as shepherd dogs. It didn't come in, a dog of very good build, but with not enough territorial instinct that came, it came from my side, but it didn't come through to all of them. They initiated all types of fights with other dogs of the pack, and this way they made the pack weaker against predators. We went many times to Macedonia to find good Sharplaninax for our purposes. What I experienced was and I saw that there were Kangals, there were Caucasian Shepherds as well, and they were mixed with Sharplaninax. They don't care about purebred breeding there either. They also mix dogs out of curiosity what will become of them, and sometimes with very good results. In a real dog lovers usually there is more curiosity than sorry for the loss of profit. I think so. I also got two Volkadaf puppies as a gift, and my friends usually AKS what I want to do with them. Nothing. I want to watch them and see what they are able for. I want to learn from them. I don't want to make money, I don't want to make a career with them, I just want to learn from them. And I see that there too, I see this in these Muslims too, they are just curious. And Tay usually say, you might make better money if you bred purebred dogs, but I mix one, I put in this Caucasian or, I put in this Kangal into my Sarplaninax let's see what happens to them. They are simply curious, a really good dog breeder is curious. Instead of purebred Sharplaninax, the dogs are also mixed there quite much. The Sharplaninac is interesting even because there was a state breeding intervention there, just like with the Russians in connection with the Russian so-called shepherd dogs, but not as big. The so-called Yugoslavian wolf killer? Yes, they gave them such an artificial name, just misleading again. It all started with the Yugoslavian state formation, which was an artificial state formation, who accepted these dogs as national shepherd dogs. They gave them an artificial name, which, moreover, was just as fake as the Caucasian Shepherd or the Central Asian Shepherd. Because the Caucasian Shepherd is primarily not a shepherd dog and the Sharplaninac, the so-called Yugoslavian wolf killer is not a wolf killer. Because these dogs don't kill the wolf alone of course. 
And what is very important to add here is that in almost all show Sharplaninac lines Caucasian Shepherd bloods are added. Because the Sharplaninac, the real mountain Sharplaninac, is not a big dog. A good medium-sized dog with very strong bones, nice big head, with a very strongly shaped head, but not with an overly big one. And at the show, they don't look good in a ring where his Caucasian Shepherd ring is next to them, where mainly the heads can be seen from outside the ring. And what did they do to help this? They put some Caucasian Shepherd blood into their dogs. You have the size, problem solved. So, the fact that they came down from the mountains is partly true, but in many cases, they just went in the wrong direction. In most places, they set off in the wrong direction, 